Hi, Tanil here from Study in Australia TV. Today's episode is about Australian birds. Australia has an incredible variety of birds, with almost 900 recorded species found across both the mainland and its islands. They range from 8 centimetres to 190 centimetres and come in a numerous colours, shapes and sizes. Before we get started, let's go over what makes a bird a bird. All birds have feathers. They vary greatly and may be adapted for different purposes, but all possess them in some form. They all have wings, even flightless birds with vestigial, meaning leftover from evolution and no longer serving a real purpose, or adapted wings. They all have a bill or beak. This is a bony projection which forms their mouth, although they come in many shapes, sizes and colours. They are endothermic, meaning they can maintain their own body heat, unlike the ectothermic reptiles. They are bipedal, meaning they have two legs, and they all lay eggs. Birds first evolved from reptiles in the Mesozoic era, around 150 million years ago. If you'd like evidence of their ancestry, just look at their scaly legs and their feathers are also modified scales. So, now that we've covered what a bird is and where they come from, let's take a look at five of the most interesting and diverse birds that call Australia home. Emus. Emus are possibly Australia's most iconic bird species. One appears alongside a kangaroo on the Australian coat of arms. They were both chosen as symbols of progress, as both animals have trouble moving backward. Emus are definitely the largest species of bird in Australia, and the second largest in the world, the largest being the ostrich. They are found across mainland Australia. A subspecies which existed on Tasmania, Kangaroo Island and King Island became extinct sometime after European settlement. Unfortunately, they aren't very common along the East Coast these days. They can grow up to nearly two meters in height and weigh up to 60 kilos, which is a lot for a bird. Females are often larger than males and significantly so across the rump. They have long necks with pale blue skin underneath the feathers. Their plumage is gray brown in color. Although they are birds, they cannot fly, but don't feel too sorry for them. They have very long, very powerful legs, which allow them to run up to 50 kilometers an hour. They can also use their legs to inflict a very painful kick to any would-be predators. They have three toes on each foot. Ostriches only have two, with thick pads on the underside of their feet and relatively small wings in comparison with their large bodies. They have interesting mating behaviours. The female lays large green eggs in huge nests built on the ground, but it is the male who incubates them. The female leaves as soon as she has laid her eggs and may even go on to mate with a second male in the same season. The male does not leave the nest, going seven weeks without food, water or even defecating. He will then stay with the chicks for approximately four months until they are able to care for themselves. Time for a quick, somewhat unbelievable history lesson. In 1932, emu numbers had gotten so out of hand that they were causing devastation to crops. In an attempt to curb the population and save their crops, farmers requested assistance from the Australian Army. Believe it or not, this resulted in what is now known as the Great Emu War. The emus won. <laughs> These days, they are protected under the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act of 1999, although they're classified as least concern. Now we're going to talk about superb fairy wren. There are 10 species of fairy wren found in Australia, although these beautiful birds are in fact unrelated to true wrens. The male of each species possess vibrant plumage for attracting females 
These include the Splendid Fairy Wren, which is almost entirely electric blue and purple crowned fairy wren, which has bright purple plumage covering the top of its head. Today, we are going to focus on the superb fairy wren, which is actually comprised of six subspecies. They are found in the southeast of the mainland of Australia, as well as Tasmania, and the islands between such as Flinders and King Island and Kangaroo Island off the mainland of South Australia. They are often seen around Melbourne and Canberra and can be found anywhere with suitable dense cover and low shrubs. Superb fairy wrens exhibit sexual dimorphism, meaning that their appearance differs between males and females. This is common in many bird species, where the female is typically coloured so as not to stand out while sitting in their nest, while the male's colouring is far more vibrant, which he uses in courtship and territorial behaviour. Breeding male fairy wrens possess rich black and blue plumage across their heads, backs, throats and tails and have a black beak. Non-breeding males are a duller brown colour. The females on the other hand are mainly brown in colour with a slight bluish tinge and an orange tan beak. The males are on average slightly larger than the females. They are mainly insectivores meaning they eat insects but will also consume seeds, fruits and other plant material in small quantities. Fairy wrens exhibit interesting social and breeding behaviour. The male will sing and try to attract the female while predators are near, putting himself in danger for the sake of attracting her attention. They are cooperative breeders, with three to five adults living in a group, all helping to raise the offspring and defend their territory. Although they are socially monogamous, they are not sexually monogamous. They will even breed with individuals from outside of their group, meaning that some birds are helping to raise chicks with no biological connection to them. The females build dome-shaped nests out of spider webs, grasses, and other plant material. She will then incubate the eggs alone. When they hatch, they are fed by all of the members of the group. And once they are grown, offspring, may remain with the group or leave to join a different one. Superb fairy wrens are not endangered and are classified as of least concern. The kookaburra. There are in fact four species of kookaburra, one of which are found exclusively in Australia, two in New Guinea, and one across both. The two Australian species are called the blue winged kookaburra which can be found in Northern Australia and Southern New Guinea. And the Laughing Kookaburra, which is native to Eastern Australia, but has also been introduced to Southwest Australia and New Zealand. Today, I am going to tell you about the Laughing Kookaburra, which is the species most Australians are familiar with. They can grow up to 45 centimetres long and their beaks can reach over 10 centimetres in length. They can live up to 20 years. Its wing plumage is dark brown with white plumage on its underside and head. Their tails are a reddish with black barred pattern and they have dark brown eye stripes. Their name comes from their laughter-like call, which some describe as manic. It is particularly loud at dawn and dusk. Laughing kookaburras are carnivorous meaning their diet consists of meat, including insects, frogs, mice, rats, lizards, and even snakes. They are well known for seizing their prey and beating it against a branch to kill or tenderize it before swallowing it whole, head first. But they too can become prey for other predatory birds, such as eagles, falcons and owls, reptiles such as pythons, and monitor lizards, or even introduced predators like foxes and cats. Laughing kookaburras pair for life. Similar to the fairy wrens, they live in groups with four or five of their adult offspring sharing a territory. These group members help to raise their younger siblings by assisting in incubating the eggs, keeping the hatchlings warm, feeding them, and helping to defend the family territory. Females lay three eggs. Chicks are born very aggressive and with a special hook on their beaks, which adults do not possess. 
The last chick to hatch is often killed by its siblings, either by pecking it to death or stealing all of the food from it. This is known as siblicide. After approximately four years, offspring will leave their parents in order to establish their own territories. Laughing kookaburras are not considered endangered and are classified of least concern. The Southern Cassowary. There are three extant, meaning living, species of cassowary and one extinct species. All are found in New Guinea. The largest, the Southern Cassowary, also found in Northeast Australia in the wet tropics of northern Queensland. Cassowaries are related to emus and like emus, they are large flightless birds. The southern cassowary has glossy black plumage with unusual feathers which resemble hair. Like emus, they have three toes on each foot. Unlike the emu, however, they possess deadly dagger-shaped claw on their middle toes and they have long necks that are almost entirely bare of feathers but the skin is coloured in vibrant shades of blue, purple, and red, with long, drooping red wattles. Possibly the most distinguishing feature of these beautiful birds is the large brown helmet, known as a cask, on its head. The purpose of the cask is not known for certain, but it is hypothesised that it may assist in hearing and shock absorption. They can grow up to two metres tall, and although both sexes appear very similar, they do display some sexual dimorphism. Females are slightly larger than males. They can be up to 76 kilos in weight, whilst males can reach 55 kilos. The southern cassowary is the heaviest flightless bird in Australia, but the emu is taller. They serve an important role in rainforest preservation as they disperse seeds through their droppings. They eat fruits and then walk around pooping, spreading seeds across wide areas as they do so. Some seeds only germinate after passing through their digestive tract. They are not herbivores, however, as they also eat small animals and carry on, meaning decaying and dead animals. They are generally extremely solitary with adults only interacting for mating. Females will lay between three to five olive green eggs. Like the emu, the male incubates the eggs and cares for the hatchlings until they are able to fend for themselves. Now we're going to talk about little penguins. These little guys and girls are the smallest species of penguin in the world. In Australia, they are often referred to as fairy penguins. They are the only species of penguin that breeds in Australia, which has led to a popular tourist attraction to Phillip Island, where people come to watch the penguins march out of the water and onto the shore. They are found in coastal waters across much of southern Australia and can also be found across the entire coastline of New Zealand. Little penguins have evolved to live in the ocean. Like the emus and cassowaries, they cannot fly. Their wings have instead adapted into stiff flippers and they have webbed feet. Their bodies are streamlined for gliding through the water and they have very dense, oily feathers, which keeps them waterproof. Without waterproofing, they would die of hypothermia. As they love to eat fish, these adaptations are necessary for catching their prey. Although some penguins can hold their breath for 20 minutes, little penguins can only last about two minutes. There are 18 species of penguin in total and are all found in the Southern Hemisphere. Little penguins are the only adult penguins in the world with blue and white feathers. All the other species have black and white. This sort of colouring is known as countershading and is used to hide from predators. This is effective because when a predator is swimming beneath them and looks up, they blend in with the lighter colours of the water lit by the sun. When a predator looks down on them into the darker water, they blend into the darker waters where there is less light. One incredible adaptation of penguins is a special gland above their eyes, which filters out salt, allowing them to drink seawater. Like the fairy wrens and cassowaries, little penguins also exhibit sexual dimorphism. If you'd like to tell them apart, just look at their beaks. Males have thicker beaks and the females possess a distinct hook at the end, which the females do not. 
They reach breeding age at around two to three years. They establish long-term monogamous breeding pairs and use calls to maintain their bond. Once a year, the females lay two eggs about the size of chicken eggs, which she and her partner take turns to incubate. Both also help to dig their burrow in which they build their nests out of grass. Co-parenting is essential for little penguins. After 36 days of incubation, the eggs hatch and for the first 15 days of their lives, their parents will take turns going out to sea to hunt or staying behind to protect the chicks. When the hunter returns to the burrow, they regurgitate food into the chicks' mouths. After the 15 days, both parents will begin hunting for food until the chicks are old enough to enter the ocean for themselves. Although certain breeding populations are at risk from a variety of threats, such as a lack of prey, introduced predators and human interference, the species conservation status is least concern. Today, they are protected by a number of conservation legislations. That brings me to the end of today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed getting to know some of Australia's most fascinating inhabitants. I have certainly enjoyed telling you about them. Stay tuned for future episodes from Study in Australia TV. Thank you for joining us and I hope to see you soon.